Today, I embark on a travel experience with microphones in my ears to put a costly set of portable headphones through their paces. And just to keep things objective, I may have also packed a few interesting speakers. This story begins at the 3D printer, literally the night before the journey as I scramble to prototype a set of wearable microphones. The idea is to let you experience the sound from my vantage point and I've deliberately put this off until the very last minute because, as I understand it, travel is synonymous with poor time management. Hey, we've got sound! A pair of omnidirectional condensers from Panasonic should do the trick. They aren't exactly full range, but for all intents and purposes, this is just a draft, seeing if I might want to build a proper one of these one day. The driving circuits are stuffed into the plugs, the brackets snap onto my frames, and the articulating arms position the capsules right over the ear canal. Ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen, I give you the world's cheapest binaural microphone. Good enough. Let me introduce the headphones. And inside this fancy outer box we find an EVA carrying case immediately alluding to some on-the-go listening. Indeed, these are the Meze Lyrics. A pair of closed-back planars fitted with a set of isodynamic hybrid arrays, similar to the ones you'll find on the Meze Elite, which in the company's own words have been re-engineered for portable use. So let's go portable. I booked a room in an 1800 colonial mansion situated in a nearby historic town of St. Genevieve, and we'll come back to the headphones on the way there. Right now, it's time to pack, and as I've alluded to earlier, headphones aren't the only listening implements that fit into luggage. These mysterious objects fit quite nicely themselves, and if my matter appears secretive, it's because I haven't yet shown any of this to Sophie. Here, I've also packed a few gigs of lossless audio, and the following day, we are ready to hit the road. For some initial impressions, I gave Sophie the task of getting the headphones out and playing. To Mezzi's credit, this was quite intuitive with discrete annotations for what goes where, though before any music had been played, the first notable reaction was to the sheer quiet. Jesus. What? Well, that was a very obvious difference. To what? The noise floor. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Speaking of, what is the noise floor in here? Grab the SPL meter. Just as a point of comparison, the THX standard specifies anywhere between 79 and 82 decibels as a reference listening volume. Meanwhile, the noise inside this vehicle is already within 8 or so decibels of the threshold, inadvertently reducing the dynamic range, the same way ambient light reduces the contrast of a projected image. But with the headphones rejecting nearly 22 decibels of that noise, listening on the road or even while flying becomes a possibility. Though when I prompted Sophie to actually play some music, right away things got a bit fidgety. This will make more sense in a minute. For the moment, the prevailing takeaway is that the headphones provide good isolation. Oh wow, you can hear the difference. Yeah? yeah. Next, I thought I'd take a turn, so I had Sophie pause the music, hand over the cans, and let me start with a few seconds of quiet. Noise isolation aside, it became quite obvious that a cell phone would not drive these headphones. Not for a road trip, anyhow. More immediately, though, my attention was drawn to the right channel being considerably louder than the left, even after we swapped the individual cables. This, however, would be a concern for later as we've just gotten into town. So this is St. Genevieve. It's downtown St. Gen. Beautiful. Is it? I think so, anyways. It's neat. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of Bisbee. Yes! Minus the elevation Only changes. Much so, here is the place, and we have the upstairs, complete with the one window. The one. The one. It's good. I like the cozy feel and the acoustics of a slanted ceiling. With the car unpacked, everything made its way up, and wasting no further daylight, we set out to find a noisy venue. Alright, 100% tourist mode. 
and not even a minute later. Hi. Hello. Hi, Anyhow, the walk proved informative as a way to establish that the headphones sit well for carrying around the neck, and connecting them to a device can be done mid-stride, all while navigating around telephone poles. But no stationary obstacle holds a candle to this next challenge, the Anvil Saloon and Restaurant. Granted, you wouldn't actually wear headphones to a dining experience, but the venue is lively with sound which makes for an imposing noise floor. So if you were inclined to check out from a verbal exchange happening directly in front of you, here's right Roughly what that might sound like. I wanted to get a French dip. Fries or a different size? Oh, fries, please. And then we wanted to get a bacon cheeseburger. Medium, medium well. Also with French fries. Yeah, I didn't hear what you said. That being said, while I appreciate how the headphones deal with the ambient noise, everything else, including the issue of left to right balance, remains unresolved. They sound a little lean, which is fine. Number one, they're being powered from a phone. Number two, they have no DSP. You could probably use a software DSP to punch up the bass a little bit just so it's flat, but as it stands, it feels like there's a little bit of a hump. After an excellent meal and a walk back to the inn, I decided to unpack one of the mysterious objects I alluded to earlier, just in time to capture Sophie's first reaction as she emerged from the other room. The hell are those? These are the G5000s from Edifier. Sort of a uh, mini bookshelf meets Alienware. Okay. It's raining so heavily in there, I cannot do Needless to say, all the flashy RGB stuff aside, the G5000s are a good contender to a premium set of headphones specifically in terms of their performance to portability ratio. For all intents and purposes, this is about the biggest thing that isn't a set of headphones that I would still consider packing for a quality near-field experience on the go. But for now, let's return to the lyrics, which I still haven't ran balanced, so here's another item from the luggage. You brought the tube amp with you? Yep. <laughs> I even brought, you brought a choice of tubes. You brought spare tubes. Of course you brought spare tubes. What's nice about this particular tube amp is the Class A power stage, allowing it to drive a set of planars without an output transformer. And that's my segue to the fact that Meze offers their own line of balanced cables. This one terminates to a 4-pin XLR connector and is about as nice a headphone cable as I've ever handled. Feel this. Pre-braided. Hey, look, it says Meze on it again. Ooh, that is nice. Wee. So, let me just get my ears on and see what happens when we feed the headphones some power. Interesting is the panning notwithstanding, these are almost perfect response wise. Like I don't I don't think I would have to EQ these much at all. <laughs> This is nearly correct, which is something that I couldn't even say for the elites. Indeed, with around 2000 milliwatts of headroom, these things come alive in ways that I still can't fully appreciate with this balance issue persisting throughout the experience, but I can see the potential. So until I have a chance to discuss this with Meze, there is still one more alternative I thought I'd throw into the ring. There's another box. There's another box. How many companies? This is the Morris Pro from Gravistar. Bluetooth connected. Oh yeah. 
I'm sorry, it's a talking robot? It's a speaker. It's a talking robot. It's a talking robot speaker. With a big-ass passive radiator. I'm fascinated. Well, big-ass relative to the front. Also, it is an ass. I love this thing already. It's an action figure with a 20 watt subwoofer, a 5.5 pound zinc alloy ball that pairs via Bluetooth and delivers an impressive performance relative to its size. It's so, cute. I love so. It. which is bigger, really? All things considered, the difference in the amount of space that each of these takes up in the luggage is negligible. Meanwhile, what the Mars Pro lacks in bandwidth, it makes up for in a hands-on experience. That's a bit of vibration to it, doesn't it? I can feel it in my feet. Watch. I like all the weathering that they've done on mm -hmm. it too, and it's actually, it's not just paint, it's like there are, you can feel this. <sighs> yeah. You're probably not going to be able to see that in there, but when it punches... That one. You can see that. Look at the passive radiator. Back piece. I actually understand what a passive radiator is now. In the end, each of these portable solutions fills a slightly different niche. And I do realize just how impractical it is to pack all this stuff for travel, we're just having a goofy weekend. But for the headphones to get their fair shake, we will need them in their factory intended condition. So those will be headed back to Meze, and through the magic of editing, we'll try this again here in a minute. As for everything else, the Mars Pro will go right here, and the G5000s have made themselves at home on my workshelf. In fact, you might have already spotted them in one of my prior videos. In any event, the problem with the lyrics turned out to be an incorrect torque setting used during the driver assembly. A rare occurrence isolated to the first production batch and promptly addressed with additional quality control measures. So after the sped up re-unboxing, I immediately wired the headphones with the balanced cable into the Monolith 887 and onto the mini DSP ears. This is where the positive aspects of my listening experience were finally validated. Response-wise, there is very little here to correct, at least with my personal mid-volume equal loudness contour as the target. So that's what you're seeing here for the left and the right channel, and down here is the left and the right correction curve that I'm using to make that happen. Anyhow, we'll come back to this later. For now, it's time once again to go portable. The luggage is packed, this time leaving behind the Mars Pro, the intricate features of which make it a fragile travel companion. It is, however, perfect for around the house, especially in places where a stereo soundstage isn't going to matter. The headphones are packed with this 2.5mm balanced cable, also available through Meze. It'll plug into the Ear Studio ES100 Mark II, which I suppose is a tad more portable than a tube amp. I can also bypass the Bluetooth directly through USB. So that is the loadout. And what do you know, just in time for the first snow to fall. No matter, the car is packed and we're off. Once again, Sophie gets into the travel case, this time with the Ear Studio all set to power the headphones. Though first, a brief re-immersion into the quiet. You know, I've spoken with Mesley since then, and then they confirmed my measurements. It is, in fact, 21 decibels of noise isolation. Really? Yeah. They're so comfortable. Next, it's time for a bit of music. And here, you can see the volume control getting some immediate attention, though a few miles down the road, the results are in. Wow. It's really nice. Yeah? Alright, my turn. Once again, starting off with a bit of silence, followed by a spot of my weird music. Alright. Alright. So 
this is, I guess, what 21 decibels of noise isolation sounds like. So, as you've kind of gotten to hear, the lyrics excel at passive noise isolation, which in turn spares you having to use the volume knob just to compete with the noise floor, thereby also sparing you the listening fatigue. More importantly, the sound is crisp, and while the pickup on the ear capsules rolls off around 40 Hz, the sub bass is definitely present, and despite the road noise, it is well defined. So, take that, other speakers in the back. This, part plane, is where headphones rule. At any rate, here we are getting into the historic town of St. Genevieve once again lodging at the Inn St. Gem. And with everything upstairs, we set off for the anvil. I even managed to find use for the inside pocket of my hoodie. This will come in handy for my very practical walking around and listening music test. What do you think? That sounds really nice. And in warm. the cold, it definitely changes things. Indeed, for $2,000 these things had better keep your ears warm, which they do, all the while sounding pretty incredible. But for now, it's time to get in out of the cold and test these things against a nearby conversation. Another excellent meal later, we made our way back to the room, and with the headphone cups rotating full 360, wearing them around the neck is very comfortable. Anyhow, let's give the alternative a chance, and to their credit the G5000s set up in a matter of seconds. What's more, since we appear to have the place all to ourselves, here's an impromptu demo of how the sound carries all the way downstairs.
needless to say, these will fill a room and totally piss off the neighbors. That aside though, after settling in for the evening, we found ourselves binge listening to a series of podcasts and edifiers couldn't have been more edifying in an instance where we both wanted to hear the same thing. In the end though, the lyrics are the ultimate winners, playing near flat between 4Hz and 92kHz with virtually no harmonic distortion and minus 21 decibels of noise isolation is a traveling audiophile's dream come true, though just because these were built to contend with noise doesn't mean it's the only way they're useful. My favorite way of listening to these is still at home where the headphones transform the already quiet ambience into a perfect silence, allowing me to actually appreciate the insane level of clarity and control made possible with the hybrid isodynamic arrays, which I would also add should be experienced with some electrical headroom. No doubt this is where Meze would point to the 30 ohm rating, making these easy to drive under more circumstances, however I find that elevating that bottom octave for equal loudness requires a lot of power, more than I can drain from a cell phone, in fact more than I can supply from this portable amp. So after that entire experience, I find myself with the headphones plugged right back into the monolith with a DSP running my custom correction profile. This by a long stretch is my favorite closed back experience. It might have taken Meze a retry to get it right, but they did. And now this is what sets the bar. End of story. As always, big thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to your listening impressions, choice of gear and all the rest. Speaking of which, a shout out also goes out to Edifier and to Gravistar for putting up some friendly competition. Links to everything down below. Don't forget to rate the video as you see fit, subscribe if you're so inclined, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers! I'm not sure if this will make it into the video, but if you follow me, it's just started raining and I think I can offer you some interesting ASMR.